Ah, the American presidency, something sought after by people far and wide. And while many spend their entire lives chasing this title, very few ever make it a reality. William Henry Harrison was one of those lucky few to gain the title of leader of the free world, where he won the 1841 election where he beat the at the time President Martin Van Buren, and then proceeded to have the shortest presidency ever. Like, period. Like, not even come close to the amount of speed William exhibited in vacating the White House. The 1841 election was way ahead of its time, and while previous elections certainly haven't been boring, like in the 1828 elections where John Quincy Adams was accused by Andrew Jackson of pimping out an American chambermaid to the Russian Tsar, but what made this election so different was the lengths both parties went to to obtain the victory. Both sides put out propaganda and merchandise slandering the opposing party. Like, how could we forget? The William Henry Harrison teapot. Yes, this is real. And songs were even written, like this certified banger, Tippecanoe and Tyler 2. For Tippecanoe and Tyler 2, for Tippecanoe and Tyler 2, and with them will be little Van Van. The Van Buren campaign were in the 1840s equivalent of Facebook ads, which promoted the narrative that William was a drunk who sat around drinking hard cider in a ramshackle log cabin. Unfortunately for Van Buren, he rolled like a two in deception, and these stories somehow managed to help Harrison. William began to embrace the narrative of being a drunkard, and became a man of the people, just like everyday folks, while Van Buren was turned into the rich, out-of-touch aristocrat. He even went so far as to build log cabins filled with hard cider and major political debates, and as history has shown, if you give the citizens alcohol, you win the election. Like any self-respecting leader of the free world, there came a time where William had to compose his inaugural speech, and William being the first member of the Whig party to ever be elected, he wasn't about to muck around. Unfortunately, on the day that William was scheduled to give his big boy speech, a March storm kicked up and Washington was hit with freezing cold winds and rain. A lesser man would have canceled the event, postponed it to a later date with more favorable weather, but William Henry Harrison was no ordinary man and proceeded to give a two hour long inaugural speech which is the longest in US history to this day without wearing any sort of coat. And while his speech may have been rousing, the weather gods got the last laugh. Because shortly after William had been sworn in, he fell ill with what was thought to be pneumonia, which is the second worst disease of all time, only bested by lumbago. Oh, I got lumbago. It's very serious. This being the 1840s and William being 68 years old at a time where the average life expectancy was 40-ish, you wouldn't need to be a mod of r slash medicine to deduce that Henry was at the end of his rope. A team of doctors were called upon who performed all known forms of proven medicine, from bloodletting to making the president drink a combination of Virginia snake root and crude petroleum. Yes, the same petroleum we now use to make asphalt and pesticides. And to the surprise of no one with even an inkling of modern medical knowledge, these cures only proceeded to weaken old General Mum. And on April 4th, 1841, William Henry Harrison died 31 days into his presidency and became the first president to die in office. William's sudden death left the control of the country to his vice president, John Tyler, who gained the title His Accidency, which is honestly way more tragic than any presidential death. As if this situation needed another layer of dumb shit added to it, it was later found that the White House's water supply was downstream from public sewage, which most likely led to septic shock in the already weakened Harrison. Some would say William Henry Harrison was just really unlucky. Others may claim that his short presidency was the work of some greater being. Honestly, divine intervention and just sheer bad luck both scare the pants off me. So I think the best conclusion is that the late William Henry Harrison holds the any percent United States presidency speedrun world record, and unless the next president-elect decides to give their inaugural address in the middle of a hurricane, that may be one title old Harrison will be holding on to. Sorry for the short video, guys. I'm working on a bigger project, but I didn't want to leave you guys hanging for too long. More videos should be arriving in the near future. Anyways, if you have any ideas for things you want to be made into videos, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching. For Tippecanoe and Tyler too, for Tippecanoe and Tyler too, and with them will be little Van Van, Van is a used up man, and with them will be little Van Van.